Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We're going to do a little flip through of a um, product from Columbia Games. This is a Harn World or Harn product. Um, once again, uh, this very beautiful Thursday. And uh, we're going to take a look at the Kingdom of Kande. This is uh, one in a series now, which this is number four actually, of, uh, of some brief overviews and flip throughs of the current materials um, of the Kingdoms of Harn. Uh, we did Azadmir last time. We had already done uh, Kaldor and uh, Kabisa uh, previously. So we're going to do um, the Kingdom of Kande today, and Rathim will be up next, or Rethim. Um, Tharda is on hold because uh, Columbia Games has a new version of the Tharda uh, Republic module coming, and it's not out yet. So we will circle back to that one um, once we um, once that is out. So let's take a look at, um, again, placing this in the context of the island of Harn. So the most common like campaign starting area in Harn has traditionally been Kaldor, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, um, Kaldor is a region that is pregnant with possibilities. There's a lot going on there. Uh, there's a lot that's about to happen there because the king is the king could die any time, and a huge succession war could occur. Um, a, lo a lot of development has occurred in the Kaldor area. Almost every one of these sites that has a named location on the map has an article about it. You can go and get more information. Um, so Kaldor is extremely well developed. It's a very popular starting place. Um, however, where I have, generally speaking, preferred to start campaigns is actually in the region that we call Tharda. And it is called Tharda because it is the region drained by the river Tharg, which is the this winding river that runs uh, up from Lake Banath to the sea uh, with Golotha, the city of Golotha at its mouth. Um, unlike Kaldor, which is kind of one unified kingdom, at least at the moment, um, Tharda has three smaller kingdoms that make it up. Um, there is, first of all, the Thardic Republic, which kind of sits high, high, high up river, um, this area right here. It's actually not marked as such on the map, uh, but Koronon is run by the Thardic Republic. It's the largest city on Harn. Um, we have done some a, a little bit of information on the cities of Harn. Uh, we'll see if we can circle back to that at some point. Uh, the city of Sharan is also part of the Thardic Republic. If you got in on the kingdoms uh, or the cities of Harn Kickstarter at the one dollar level, you get the city of Sharan for free. Um, there's two other cities in the region: the city of Golotha, which is an actual festering hellhole, and the city of Aliath, um, which there's some interesting history behind. Um, the other two nation states in this area are, and, and the Thardic Republic is. Uh, structured a lot like the Roman Republic, it's clearly inspired by the Roman, Re Roman Republic, but it kind of developed in an opposite direction, where there used to be an empire here, the Korani Imperium, and it fell apart for a variety of reasons, including um, imperial incompetence. Um, and from that crisis, the Balshan Jihad emerged this new republic of Tharda. So um, instead of a, a republic transitioning to an empire, um, this is a, an empire transitioning to a republic, but it could easily transition back. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about Tharda or the Thardic Republic specifically. But today we're talking about Kande. Now the other two kingdoms down here are actual feudal kingdoms, the kingdom of Rathim, pronounced Rethim by some, um, and the kingdom of Kande. And these are it would be an oversimplification to say that uh, Rathim is the bad guy kingdom and Kande is the good guy kingdom, but generally speaking, Kande is well-meaning at least, even if it doesn't always uh, manage to execute on that well-meaningness, um, and Rathim is full of jerks. Um, again, that's a bit of a, an oversimplification. One might also uh, say that Rathim is full of uh, people who believe in meritocracy and rewarding merit, where Kande is a place where uh, religious zealots run the place, although that's not less true in Rathim. Um, so, and just as there are two, there's, there's a rivalry, there's a three-way rivalry between all three of these nations. Um, 
There's also a religious rivalry between Candé and Rathim because in Candé, the Church of Lorani, who is the Lady of Paladins, is very popular, at least among the aristocracy. Um, and the, the the worship of Peony is very popular among the peasants. She's the fertility goddess of healing and that kind of thing. Um, very popular in Rathim are the churches of Agric and of Morgath. Um, Agric is the evil god of fire and war, and Morgath is the god of ultimate darkness uh, and of the undead. So it is a it, it is not a happy place. Um, so let's take a look at Candé setting setting that scene. Um, the, the, and the note that the population is kind of divided between these three states means that there's less population density here um, or, or it's split in, in three kingdoms rather than being in one big kingdom um, as it is in Caldor. So here is the current version of the Kingdom of Kande Kingdom module. And it's got a nice cover. I'm guessing it's a Richard Luschek cover. Um, we will talk about the uh, order of the checkered shield this uh, individual is clearly supposed to be someone from that religious fighting order uh, of the church of lorani uh, we have here a political map and this is going to have the major fiefs on it um, a lot of the land area of kande is kind of consumed by the ternu heath which is not amazing profitable land um, but there's some interesting sites there too and actually if we go back here we're gonna find that uh, where exactly is that location there's an earthmaster site down here somewhere uh, at Tessian right here and I don't see that marked on this map this is the political map however so that's why um, this will have all of the Okay, very good. So it actually breaks down by color who reports to whom. So the black is the royal domain um, or either held by the king or reporting directly to the king. Um, and then we have three earls, the Earl of Harith, the Earl of Sarkum, and the Earl of Selvos. And then we have some individual baronies that presumably re report directly to the king. And then the red is the order of the checkered shield. Now this bears... Uh, discussion, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then there's an Eliath, which is or Eliath, which is uh, a chartered free town that holds a charter, royal charter, from the king to operate. And there's a uh, council of city aldermen that run the place. Um, so here is what we call the uh, uh, the. Oh, I forget what the name of these. They have a name for these maps, but this is like the in-world version of the map that you can actually photocopy this on some fancy schmancy parchment type paper and hand this out to your players and it represents the physical artifact that they have in the game that is the map of Kande, for example and there's one of these for the island there's one of these for each kingdom uh, these are all over the place uh, that is what i have done in the past it makes a really cool handout okay so we have our basic um information on the kingdom of Kande. it's uh, relatively spread out it's nine squares now those are those are these squares remember a population of 96,000. Now that seems that that's probably going to sound really low. Um, and I, I may have mentioned this in previous videos about Harn. Um, it does sound low, but it's it's an appropriate population for the Middle Ages. And this is a very medieval setting. And that's what this is intended to replicate. Um, and figure there's probably some people that are falling through the cracks in that population count too, right? Um, so, uh, Kende is a feudal kingdom founded in 589 after the collapse of the Theocracy of Tekos. This is a Morgathian uh, theocracy that ran the entire region for uh, 20, 25 years, something like that. We'll see that in the timeline. Um, and uh, it was not a nice, happy time to be a resident of this area at the time. As if you're, you're, you know, your region is being run by the Church of the Undead, that's a bad sign. Um, is bordered to the northwest by Rathim and the Thardic, and to the northeast by the Thardic Republic. Uh, the king dislikes war. The king is Andassan the Fourth. Um, he dislikes war, but has been unable to halt the ongoing bloody skirmishes between the Lorrainian Order of the Checkered Shield and the Agrican Order of the Copper Hook along the Rathimi border. This is sort of the central conflict that's cooking in between Rathim and Kande. There's a couple other things going on in. in 
Kande and a couple other things going on in Rathim. But this is the this is the um, the central conflict between the two. Um, recently, relatively recently, remember that it is the year 720 Tuzin Reckoning. Um, relatively recently, about 40 years before, um, there was a conflict called Izar's War, named after the Grand Master of the Order of the Copper Hook, which is, so these are two religious fighting orders. The Checkered Shield is a Lorrainian fighting order. Um, the Copper Hook is an Agrican fighting order. Um, uh, Kande won this war, right, and they seized a significant amount of territory, um, but the Order of the Copper Hook has never respected the settlement, and there continues to be friction between the two that is very likely to break out, unless something else happens to distract one or the other, uh, very likely to break out into another new war between Rathim and Kande in the not-too-distant future. Um, Kande also, however, got into a war seven or eight years ago with the Thardic Republic called the Kusim War, and the very capable Marshal Cronus of the uh, uh, Thardic Republic uh, beat the pants off of the Candean army. So uh, King Andesson's greatest fear is an alliance between his two northern rivals. That's fairly unlikely, but you can understand why he would be concerned about that. Um, here we have a list of the monarchs of Kande. You can see that the, the kingdom was founded in 589, and it is run by Andesson IV in the present. Uh, his mother, Miralael, was, uh, was reigning queen, the queen regnant of Kande for uh, a decent amount of time, 20 years or so. Okay, so credits on here, uh, written by N. Robin Crosby, Ed King, John Scamato, Art by Richard Luschek and Matt Rogner, uh, who did the heraldry, apparently. Um, all right, so here we get into what I it was always my favorite part of reading the Harnik history specifically. A lot of role-playing game setting histories are super dry and boring. I have never found that to be the case with the Harn histories. I find them all interesting. There's tons of plot hooks buried in here, weird things that happen that could be, you know, could come up again at any time. Um, so Jaren peoples lived in southwestern Harn by about 1000 sort of BT. That's before the Tuzin calendar. Um, uh, Jaren and Lithian peoples evidently arrived, eventually arrived in the area. And about 350, the Alita tribe of the southern Arid River Valley unified under the chieftain Alash. Um, and this looks like, this is uh, twos and reckoning uh, dates at this point. Um, this resulted in the founding of the kingdom of Aliathia, which is eventually annexed by the Karani Empire, which is run out of Koranan. Um, so uh, Zuwaka, this King Zuwaka of Eliathia, decided he was going to take advantage of uh, a succession crisis in the Karani Empire, and the Empire responded by immediately appointing their best military leader as the new emperor who came down here and kicked Zuwaka around, resulting in the annexation of that country. Um, Eventually, um, due to a variety of reasons that, we, again, we'll circle back to when we talk about the Thardic Republic, um, the last of the Karani emperors, Medak the Impaler, known for impaling people with whom he had no patience, was eventually impaled uh, himself. And um, because he, one of the people that he had put to death was a, a Morgathian prophet named Balsha. Um, when Balsha is killed, uh, the Balshan Jihad um, arises in these Morgathian followers. He's managed to talk the, 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 the common people into following this Morgathian uh, crusade. Um, and that results, in, Balsha is of course dead by this point. Uh, we get the theocracy of Tekos that runs, um, conquers Aliath in 572. Um, some uh, Eliathians escaped on ships uh, and fled uh, to elsewhere. They were eventually given sanctuary by the king of Meldarine and founded the city of Thay. We'll eventually circle around to Meldarine as well, but that's on the other side of the island. Um, uh, so here we got the, the fall of the theocracy. Um, when the empire fell, uh, this individual... 
declares his loyalty to Horanam of Tekos, who runs the, the theocracy. Um, but he shelters enemies of the theocracy and establishes his army of refugees. Um, he eventually gets uh, executed, but it, it eventually that army, uh, when the theocracy falls, uh, ends up founding the current kingdom of Kande. Um, and that's this uh, the same individual, Elatus of Kand, who is is uh, whose name is uh, the name of the ruling dynasty of Kande. Um, so we have some more history here. We talk about some friction between um, the Thardic League, uh, what was at the time the Thardic League, and the uh, Kingdom of Malaren, which eventually gets conquered. Um, here we have Izar's War, which we've already talked about. This is a particularly fascinating piece of history, and we've got some, some more detail here than I've seen in the past. Uh, also the Kusim War and Marshal Cronus. Uh, Queen Ariel, who had ruled uh, Kande in the past, uh, that was Queen Miralael's uh, sister, and then Miralael is the mother of the, or was the mother of the current king. Um, the the uh, the earls in so the the feudal structure on Harn. There's no like dukes. There are in some of the mainland kingdoms. Um, there's there are kings and then underneath the kings there are earls and underneath the earls there can be barons and then some sometimes barons report directly to the king too um, so the earls there the three earls of candy are relatively powerful um, and here's a picture uh, of king and in the fourth uh, natural resources, the Terdu Heath, which we've already talked about. It's it's not really it's it's not land you can farm. Um, you can definitely go in there and cut peat, and I know that uh, there are there's some sheep herding that happens there. Uh, I'm not going to actually go through the text here. One of the main exports of Kande is wool from those sheep, for example. Uh, here's a little note on exposure, which is pretty cool. Here's the economic data from. Um, from the kingdom uh, okay so there's supply there's demand or there's self-sufficient so if you want to see uh the the fief of of uh Dunir, for example is self-sufficient in cattle grain linen and the stone uh, it has surpluses of horses salt sheep uh, and it needs everything else charcoal copper dye iron lead tin and wood um, so this gives you some economic information with which to uh, to fill in uh, background details. I've always found this kind of thing to be super valuable. Uh, then again, I am super detail oriented when it comes to this kind of thing. Uh, we have a little thing on markets and fairs here. This, by the way, is a 56 page article. We're only 12 pages in at this point. So there's a lot to go. Um, the religious the religious climate in Kande is dominated by the Church of Lorani, but that's deceptive. Most of the people follow Peony, who is again the the sort of fertility mother goddess uh, of healing and, and fertility. Um, but the nobility tend to follow Lorani, and that's why Lorani politically dominates the kingdom. Um, the churches of Save Kanor and Halia uh, also have temples here. Uh, worship of Ilvir and Seriyin is discouraged, uh, but proscribed in Perishire. Um, Agric, Morgath, and Nave are uh, worship of them, the, the Dark Trinity, are punishable by death, which it typically is in most of these kingdoms, unless they're actually bad places to be. Um, I mean, it's medieval, so there's no good places to be, but but bad is, in, is a relative thing. Um, we have some descriptions of the holdings of these. So then there's a cathedral being built at Cori, apparently. Um, here's some stuff on clothing and dress. Um, music. There is a Harper's Hall in Elioth. So uh, that's the guild of musicians, among other things. Um, so just the fact that that's there means that some that people come to train as musicians here in Kande. Um, some stuff about diet, which is always useful. Here's... <coughs> Excuse me. Here's achievements of the great clans of Kande. This is all of them um, in this case, because there's a relatively small number. You can say, hey, only the barons on up uh, get get this treatment, and they're all, they're all here pretty much. Uh, so this is the house of Khan. This is the house of Milaka, which I I think is the Earl of Selvos. I think. 
Um, these are the families rather than the, the fiefs. So, um, and then of course we have the checkered shield as well, uh, because they have actual the, the the fighting order has actual feudal holdings in Kande. Um, and then here we have the the heraldic descriptions of um, of the various heraldry uh, heraldry. And so this is something I have a little bit of understanding about. That the, there's this particular language um, derived ultimately from medieval French that is how you describe heraldry. It's very formal. And if it seems like this is uh, a, a peculiarly Euro historical European way to describe heraldry, um, it is, but it's also very precise and you can replicate uh, somebody's heraldry from this description exactly. Or, you know, though the, 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 uh, the charge might be a little small or a little big or something like that, but, but you can identify heraldry based on this and you can replicate it. And that's why it was even used historically. Um, so uh, don't get too hung up on this. It just, you know, kind of leave it in the background and then you can show people the coats of arms if you need to. Um, so here's the genealogy of the royal house that is uh, and here's the descent of the clan Khand from the monarchs of Aliathia uh, which is pretty cool actually um, we have some stuff on government this is a pretty absolutely dead typical for Harn um, feudal kingdom government um, we have all of the various uh, officers of the kingdom we have you know the Lord High Chamberlain he's got these people uh, reporting to him all the way down to the royal chef and the master of the cellar. I uh, should tell you something about the, the kingdom of Kande right there, that there is in fact a royal chef and master of the cellar. Um, the chancellor, the chancellor of the exchequer, there's the chancellor of Kande um, and the chancellor of the exchequer, who's the finance guy. And then there's the Lord Marshal, who is in fact the king. Um, and then you have sheriffs. So sheriffs are, uh, and again, this is a kind of a medieval England thing where in addition to the feudal uh, map uh, of the kingdom, there are also uh, shires that the kingdom is divided into. And the shire is, uh, there is a representative of the king called the sheriff or the shire reeve that um, is in, not in charge of, but he represents the king's will in that uh Shire and the shires do not typically line up with the feudal fiefs. Um, and here's the shires in the hundreds, and then the shires are divided into hundreds. Um, and it talks about this. Uh, there's, there's a shire moot that is where where the sheriff's seat is in, and then the sheriff appoints a bailiff for each hundred, which is the you know the smaller subdivision. Um, and you can see right away there's three earldoms, but there's six or seven shires. Um, some of the hundreds are designated as forest hundreds. That means they're supposedly in a left fallow in, legally by the, the uh, by the king's will. And there's some descriptions of these. Um, and you'll notice that let's pick pick one at random here. Ravenoth Forest is part of the royal forest of Naroth, which also includes portions of Naroth Hundred. It is a relatively pristine wilderness and a bountiful source of wild plants and fungi. The forest is a permanent source of yew for longbows and an infamous refuge for outlaws. The warden is Earl Cassian of Haroth. So right here, right, we have plot hooks, right? Um, we, we have a sense of a sense of the place. We have something about what it is doing economically. And we know that there's a, an infamous refuge for outlaws, right? Um, maybe your party of characters is set up in opposition to the outlaws or in alignment with the outlaws or maybe they are forced to seek refuge here in Ravenoth Forest because they are now outlaws because they screwed something up. Um, so every paragraph here has a, has, I'm exaggerating slightly by saying that I suppose, but um, many, many, many paragraphs, a large percentage of the paragraphs um, contain hooks to either hang your campaign on or start your campaign from or um, that you can bring into your campaign as a, as a plot idea. Um, here's a section on the military of Kande. And we have, again, the checkered shield represents a significant military because you get these some really well-armed people, right? 
Um, so you have, a, they're a significant military asset to this kingdom. Uh, and there's, you know, elite fighting order and all that. But, um, and founded by a, an earlier king of Kande, by the way. Um, <clears throat> so that's why they have a big, a big castle too. Menakot is actually a castle rather than just a keep. Um, if we go back to the um, regional map, the hollow red circles are keeps. The filled in red circles are, are castles. They are significantly more formidable fortifications. And then the red squares are cities, uh, which are, all, in, in Harnic terms, which are all walled towns. There's some pretty big towns that are not walled and therefore are not considered cities. And a couple of them are in this general region too. Um, and then we have here the description of the individual uh, feudal uh, units within the kingdom. So here is uh, the city of Aliath, for example, and you can, if you have the cities of Harn product, you have a whole big, huge article on this. I forget how many pages it is, but it's a bunch. Um, and these beautiful city maps, full page city maps. Um, we're not going to go through in the individual ones, but you have the individual fief information, which includes acreage and land quanti uh, quality. LQ is land quality um, and the head. And I think I think this is a uh, number of families that is that is part of that that particular fief, and it tells you what hundred they're in, for example. So you'll notice that here in the fief of Avertu. Most of it is in Asalina Hundred, but some of it's not. Some of it's somewhere else. Uh, and here's the the local sheriff. This is probably the sheriff seat. Um, here's a royal domain. Here's another sheriff. Uh, here's the earldom of Sarkum. Uh, here's Dunir. This would be the Baron of Dunir. Uh, Derissa. So the, the, the Y, you should be pronounced as a sharp E, like the, the letter, the, the sound E. So it should be derissa. Uh, that's how I would pronounce it anyway. Yeah, I believe that's an accurate statement. Somewhere there's a pronunciation guide. Don't get hung up on that. I've never been hung up on that. Um, Rathim, for example, most people pronounce it Rethim, and that was apparently Robin Crosby's intention. I think Rathim makes it sound cooler, so that's how I say it. Uh, here is a constable. He's a rather well-cut constable, Willem Tast. Some of these will have little maps, little historical um, things. So, for example, uh, this this keep was built by Zuwaka, who is the fellow who decided he was going to make uh, make hay with the Karani Imperium and ended up getting a next instead. Um, Heroth, which is a pretty big uh, castle. Ibenost, which is, I think is another castle. No, it's just a keep. You can tell from the icons. So Manicod here has the castle icon. If we go back up to Kedis, um, we have this smaller icon that indicates that it's a keep. So this guy's well, uh, well appointed, you can see. There's a ruling baroness here, which is neat. And, I mean, oh, this, uh, so this particular fief, uh, Quivum, is run by, as you can see, Christopher Walken. So feel free to role play the pants off of that. I, I absolutely would. Um, which we're, we're not going to see on video, by the way. <laughs> so here's Sarkum instead. Here's the Earl of Sarkum, who I think is the king's either the king's father yeah uh yes who is the king's father so he obviously has a lot of influence and all just a lot of information here's some more info on the church of lorani for example um Oh, this is pretty cool. Uh, we have we have multiple bishoprics of Lurani here, and they'll they'll be in uh, they'll be uh, reporting to uh, the primate, uh, the Seracela, who is the answerable to the primate of Harn, and the Candian Seracela is appointed by the Pontiff, who is like the world head of the church, 
who usually respects the wishes of the king of Kanday. Uh, so that sounds like there's an archbishop of Kanday. So you have uh, like in world names for these things, which will vary by church, uh, but they're also typically called bishops or archbishops or pontiffs or primates or whatever. So, um, and then the church holds some holdings. Uh, we also have some information about the churches of Peony and Sabicanor. Um, and I thought, um, I thought uh, Halia uh, as well, but Halia might not hold any fiefs. And that's why they're, these two are in here, because these do. Um, and then we have a settlement index. Um, and it will tell you uh, the named subinfudiated list. So if you want, if you want to, uh, if you look at the Atlas Harnica maps and you're looking for this well, manor, presumably called Aragon, uh, it'll be listed under Chison here, uh, or Chison, Chison. Well, I will let you uh, have the fun for yourself to decide how you're going to pronounce these names. Um, but there's an index of these, which is always useful. And then we have a, actually a back page, which is pretty unusual, actually. Um, uh, but it's kind of nice to have. It makes you feel kind of like you got a real book out of it. Um, there is talk of new Harn Kickstarters um, a, a brewing. So uh, when that occurs, uh, I will bring you that news. Um, in the meantime, we've had a relatively lengthy paw through of the... Um, the Kingdom of Kanday. I hope that you have enjoyed watching it. Um, please feel free to leave me any questions or comments uh, below. Subscribe to the channel. Um, Harn and Traveler are kind of the two RPG lines that I have consistently done content for and I can intend to continue doing stuff for both. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, if you'd like to support Ardwolf Slayer, it would be greatly appreciated if you would share the content around on social media, wherever you're at. Um, or there's a Patreon link in the video description, so check that out. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy gaming.